In this presentation, we can discuss about arrays and pointers. So what is an array? Array is nothing but a contiguous chunk of memory. In fact, the name of the array is a pointer to the beginning of the chunk of memory the array has. Int array of 100 is a contiguous chunk of memory which is of size 100 into 4 is equal to 400. So the identifier array is almost of type int star. So there is a constant involved in this but we are not going to discuss. So all practical purpose for the time being we can assume that the identifier array is of type int star which is a starter to solve the memory location in which the array is allocated. A of 0 is equal to star array plus 0. So dereferencing the first integer will give you the array of 0. Like that, array of 1 equal to star array plus 1. So array of 2 equal to star array plus 2. Let's prove that with the help of an example. So it contains my array of 100. So we have 100 elements in the array. So the first five elements we are initializing. The rest of the elements are expected to be 0. So we know that array of 0 equal to 0, 1 equal to 1, 2 equal to 2, etc. So now inside this for loop what we are doing is we are printing my array plus i. So there is a pointer arithmetic coming in the picture. So my array plus 0 will be printed first, then 1, then 2, etc. As per the slides we have seen, it should print 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So this is the output of the program. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then next elements are 0. So if you look at the memory, so this is how the array looks in the memory. So the first four bytes is 0, that is this 0. The next four bytes is 1, next four bytes is 2, next 3, etc. Then all zeros up to 100. So pretty much this particular array is nothing but a contiguous chunk of memory which can be accessed through pointer arithmetic. The most important thing we need to remember is this particular identifier, my array, is a pointer of type integer and it's pointing to the start of the array, which is not obvious from the syntax. That's very important. So this is the start address of the array. So that is a pointer variable of type in start. So now let's go back to the slides. So we have seen this program. So multi-dimensional arrays. Again, they are contiguous chunk of memory. There is nothing called multi-dimensional arrays in memory. So it's all contiguous chunk of memory. It's all the way we interpret it or the way compiler helps us to interpret behave like array of array in the case of two dimension array of array of array in the case of three dimension and so on as i mentioned all different interpretation and syntaxes on single chunk of contiguous memory let's make sure we remember this especially when the syntax get complicated so it's all contiguous chunk of memory. Array means contiguous chunk of memory. Two dimension, three dimension, single dimension, anything. Let's take the case of two dimensional arrays or 2D arrays. So this is how we declare the array. And this is how you access an element. So my table in this case is 10 arrays of 20 integers. So total 10 into 20 into 4, 800 bytes. So 4 is the size of integer. So 800 bytes of contiguous memory. 
so in this case also the name of the array points to the beginning of the array just like in the case of single dimensional array one of the counterintuitive thing here is the type of my table so the type of my table is int star 20 so int open parenthesis star close parenthesis square bracket 20 closing square bracket and it is not same as in star my table 20 so this parenthesis here is mandatory it's not optional so my table is a pointer to an array of 20 integers not array of 20 pointers so this is array of 20 pointers this is pointer to an array of 20 integers now how to allocate dynamically memory for a two-dimensional array so this is a syntax so first we need to figure out how much size we want after that you do an m alloc to that particular size in this case it is 800 bytes so this will return 800 bytes 20 into 10 into 4 so we are doing an m alloc and the type of the variable we need is this pointer to an array of 20 integers that is the type we need so this is how we typecast it in C++ in C you don't need this typecasting so this is the type int open parenthesis star close parenthesis square bracket 20 closing square bracket now in the case of 2D array how do we access elements using pointer arithmetic as we did in one dimensional array so this is how you do it so this is a syntax for that x is the first index y is the second index so this is the maximum value the second index can have so what we are doing is we are trying to access the element using this starting address so this is the starting address and if we add this value to the starting address you will get this particular element the logic is coming from the fact that x is the number which designate nth array of 20 integers so that is from where the derivation of this particular syntax is coming from so now let's see a demo on two dimensional array so we'll be discussing dynamic allocation and the pointer arithmetic which we have seen normally this is how you declare and use a two dimensional array so this is the declaration and this is how you access it so normally you'll have a nested two for loops one for loop inside the other one for the first index and another for the second index so you use i and j right here and here respectively so this loop will go through each and every element in my array one by one so what it does is it's assigning just an incremental value a unique value each time the loop executes so that is the my array and there is a my array one I'm using the second syntax to dynamically allocate memory so I'm allocating 10 such arrays of 20 integers so this is 800 bytes I'm typecasting it here because it is not C it is C++ so 
So typecasting is required. The axis is exactly the same. So you use this particular syntax to access this declaration as well. After that I am typecasting the first array, my array, or even I can do this. One of those arrays I am typecasting into in star and using the pointer arithmetic to access the element rather than this index. So instead of using this particular syntax, I am using this syntax to access the element. So this is the address and I am doing a star here. So I'll get the value here. So I'm printing the value and the corresponding address. Then a new line. So this is the output of the program if you look at. So this is the start address of the array. From the starting it is up to 199 which is 20 into 10 minus 1. If you clearly look, you will understand that it's a contiguous memory location. So all 4 plus. The difference between each address is 4 bytes, which is the size of an integer. It's contiguous memory location. So all I'm doing is I'm printing this particular first array using this syntax. So you can prove the same thing looking at the assembly, looking at the memory. So if I look at the memory again, you will see the same output. So this is a contiguous location. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like that up to, up to C7. So in this case, you may have to remember this syntax as well as this syntax. So now let's go back to the slides. Again we have to understand I'm repeating the same point. It's all syntax. It's all illusion by the C compiler or the C language syntax. In reality there is no two dimensional array at all. All contiguous chunk of memory of linear addresses or linear memory bytes. Compiler is just letting you to logically access a two-dimensional array while it generates assembly instruction to access the corresponding linear memory address. So it's all magic by the compiler. So a chunk of memory you can interpret to any n-dimensional array. So that's what the compiler does. So this is the syntax for initializing an array. So if it is a two-dimensional array, you can have two nested curly braces, as shown below. Array initialization can be a costly operation. We're going to see the reason next in a demo. So we're going to see a 2D array initialization and we're going to look at the disassembly of it. So I have a two dimensional array here. So 10 and 20 of dimensions. So I'm just initializing only one element to 100. So rest of the elements are supposed to be zero. That is one rule with the initialization. If you initialize one element, rest of the element becomes zero. So now we're going to see the disassembly of this particular statement. So these are the instructions which is generated by this particular statement. The first statement is more or less straightforward. So we are copying 164 in hex to the first element. So this is the first element pointed to the first element of the array. Then we are pushing 31C to 
the stack. So why is that? 3, 1, C. So 10 into 20, which is 200, into 4 equal to 800, is 3, 2, 0 in hex, which means that 800 bytes is 3, 2, 0 in hex. So this is 3, 1, C, which is 4 bytes less than 3, 2, 0. Why 4 bytes less? The reason is we have initialized the first 4 bytes here with 100. So we have to do the rest to 0. So this is the counter. This is a value which is to be filled up in the entire memory and this is the start address of the memory so EBP minus 31CH so we are allocating it here sub ESP 320H so it's a stack variable so this is a stack variable which is getting allocated here so 800 bytes so 10 into 20 into 4 that is 800 so EBP minus 31C which is 4 byte after the initial allocation which is 4 bytes after this particular value So we are copying it to EAX. Now what we are doing is we are calling a mem set. So it's all done by the compiler. We have not written any code. We are calling a mem set here with this, this, and this as parameters. So this is the start address. This is the value which to be filled. This is the counter or the length of the buffer. And we are calling a mem set. So memset is a very costly operation here which has n complexity to be very theoretical. So we are adding 12 to ESP just to reverse this three push instructions up here after the memset call. This instruction or uh, this statement is pretty costly as you can see here depends on the size of the array so it's a very good practice to initialize an array when it is only needed not before or after now let's go back to our slides so we have seen this so that brings us to the summary of the presentation. So we have seen how arrays works internally. So all arrays are contiguous chunk of memory. We are interpreting the arrays in different ways, two-dimensional, three-dimensional, etc. We have seen array initialization in the end. And that's it. Thank you very much.